Good afternoon today to one more uh, webinar. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, disaster recovery. That's new uh, feature coming with the Jovian DSS um, uh, current update, so UP12. We call it Offsite Data Protection Service or just short ODPS. So that's the current list of the features which we have and then uh, we have marked up uh, with the dark uh, dark uh, red color so that's we have uh, asynchronous replication to collocation uh, we call it uh, offsite data protection service this can be actually few different modes we are going to talk to introduce this uh, feature today and uh, because we are using uh, the duplication and compression, so we will also demonstrate how the, the, du the duplication and compression in the live um, uh, virtualization environment works. Okay, so let us switch to our server. Okay, I will introduce the setup which we have made today. So everything works under uh, VMware ESX um, uh, server. We have the single node here prepared. Okay, this single node are uh, having uh, HBA on board, and this HBA is uh, configured as a direct uh, with direct uh, path I/O. So. Here there is Jovian uh, running, a uh, new version, and this Jovian is uh, configured that this PCI device is redirected to this virtual machine. So our Jovian will get all the disks available on this node. And let me switch to the GUI of this Jovian. So that's the GUI. As you see, we have created two pools. That's pool zero and pool one, okay? On pool zero, we have made the iSCSI target. Okay, there is one ZVOL here, and we made also one uh, NFS share. Okay, so when I go to A6 back, so my A6 is running this Jovian, and this A6 is also importing resources um, exported by this Jovian. So we have here iSCSI uh, disk, which is now available as a data store. And we could also add NFS, but uh, I, I didn't add it yet for this demonstration. We'll just use the iSCSI. Okay, so we have a iSCSI, and on this iSCSI, we have uh, created some virtual machines that another Jovians and then there are plenty of windows uh, here. Uh, the one windows is even started. Let us open the, uh, open the console uh, to these windows. Okay, that's the, uh, another uh, windows which is running. So we have cloned uh, these windows machines, so they are uh, identical. Oh, I was having some Jovians here which are having also some uh, virtual disks some of them so disk up 50 gig so mm, i would i am showing this because i will show that on my local store i already uh, have 768 uh, gigabyte or well, maybe le let us re refresh to make sure that everything is showing the latest yes that's the current uh data from a VMware point of view, which are existing on this uh, data store, right? Okay. Why it is important? Uh, because um, uh, we have on this volume, uh, we have the duplication switched on. So maybe I will show you this volume iSCSI, which is using the, the duplication. So we need to go to options. Uh, sorry, not edit target, but the uh, we need to edit the zvol. So you see the the duplication option is uh, just set to on on this uh, volume. So we have from the um, 
VMware point of view, we have already saved uh, yeah, 768 gigabyte, but uh, what is from the pool point of view? When I run uh, the scrap, it, the scrap will show me the physical um, total data which is uh, saved on this storage. So we see there is very minor data. It's just 11 gigabyte physically is available here. Why so um, little? Uh, because uh, of the, the duplication and the compression uh, working both together, right? Uh, we are also replicating using this ODPS. So we are replicating the storage between this pool zero and pool one, right? Uh, so I will go to snapshots and then we see on the snapshots we have already started such this service. This service is uh, up and running. So now we have a, a 4 p.m. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, 15 minutes by um, past uh, four. So I see here 16.15, right? So that's the latest snapshot which was made here. And this snapshot is also replicated to my destination. Okay, when I open the snapshots here on my destination, I have also zero. And then that's, you see, that's exactly uh, 4 p.m and the 15 minutes. So that's the exactly last snapshot. So when it will be 16 past four, then we'll have a one more snapshot. So we see every minute we are replicating the data between both volumes. And uh, let us see what's going on on the pool one. On the pool one, I have just this iSCSI target. Okay. This iSCSI target is not exported because I have here also a, a target uh, uh, name, but uh, number of zivols is zero. So I'm not exporting this. So this zivol is a, just a destination of my backup now. And when I go to edit parameters, you see there is no deduplication here, but there is compression, of course, which is always by default. So let's say we are queries how much data will be on this pool when we have replicated everything from pool zero to pool one. On pool zero, it was compression and the duplication, and here comp just compression, okay? So in our case, when it's compression, then we see this uh, exactly 83.8, so almost 84 gigabyte. It's not so good as here that we have just 11 gigabyte, Right, but comparing to this what uh, VMware claims, that's very good result, right? So uh, that was about the live demo of the, the duplication. Of course, when I will clone one more machine, I will be having here 40 giga more because the, every machine uh, we can go and check to our to browse our machine, that's exactly this machine. So you see, that's the size of the disks which I have here. So it's exactly something like 40 giga. Uh, I can also prove it when I just edit. Uh, that's the boot disk, which is exactly 40 giga. And uh, the machine is fresh installed. So there is uh, no uh, user data on it. The only data we have is just uh, some testing data, right? So let's say I have here a folder with very small file. I can just copy and paste this folder a few times to have some original uh, data for testing. Okay, let's say I have this directory to copy five, right? So I have a few directories here. All these changes are running on the pool zero, of course. So every minute the changes are replicated to pool one. So when we will be losing pool zero, uh, then the pool one uh, will be uh, ready to take over and we will be ready to, let's say, um, make usage of our disaster recovery, make, make usage of our backup, right? So 
uh, we can uh, start and show how it works so such a disaster recovery right now and in the next step we can just explain how to set up uh, such a uh, replication service okay so uh, again on the pool zero uh, I can prove uh, which was their last snapshot here so now when I just go and see what was the last now is uh, 1619 yeah so we have a very fresh snapshot so I'm rather sure that the changes which I made are already replicated Le let's uh, simulate a disaster here so I will just export the pool so when I'm exporting so my storage will just disappear uh, I will again show how I'm connected on the storage adapters here I see I have a, in properties I am connected with multipath for 2131 target 0 and uh, second the clone uh, which is from pool 1 was just not connected but I was already preparing the connection setup here okay so now the pool 0 is exported so you see the pool 0 is shown here as a gray out and available for import uh, of course uh, I can expect problems here but when this is very short time uh, period I will not notice the problem because the timeout is uh, over 140 seconds by default but uh, le let's uh, us uh, uh, rescan so I will be rescanning so now the scanning is in the progress and uh, depends uh, how long the IO is outstanding it can be faster or slower but we see now we have already the problem the disks show as a, uh, not accessible here but the machine uh, the windows machine which is running the, is still running maybe of course having a, the problem okay i was rescanning again and uh, yeah there is uh, we for sure see there is no, no uh, volume here but we have the disaster recovery volume so uh, i am able to take my last snapshot clone it okay and attach to the target so you see this target clone which i was preparing and very important thing i was downloading the logs and uh, I was because I'm prepared for disaster so I was downloading the logs before and then here I have a SCSI ID when I will put the exactly same SCSI ID then VMware uh, should work let's say clone uh, one I can uh, of course pu put a nice name but um, I don't care right now so uh, I care that I want to have this disk exported as soon as possible so I was making the uh, clone out of the last snapshot and now when I go to iSCSI targets you see my target.clone uh, is having this zvol and let us see what it has it has exactly this uh, clone made from the auto snapshot okay so let us go to VMware again okay when we complete it you see there is a disk uh, appearing uh, already and when we go to storage uh, the disk appear uh, as well and these machines appear as well so let us check what's going on with our Windows machine so of course I would like to check so in every uh, we have just this uh, setup file so it looks good all the files are there uh, I can even let's say maybe reboot this machine 
other plant. So this machine will be restarting now. We can uh, make 100% sure that everything was uh, as before. Sometimes Windows has some uh, files in caching and so on, so uh, it could take a few minutes time to prove, but when I reboot, then it's 100%. Okay. Okay, so that's our files. Everything looks good. Okay, so that was quite a um, disaster. We lost our volume and now we are working just on the clone. Um, of course, uh, here, when you will be running an uh, active uh, database, uh, then uh, you uh, we will need an extra plugin, which is not uh, ready yet. But all the data, uh, uh, which um, regular stuff, which is uh, not a database, the machines, uh, even after longer period, they will be just started uh, with uh, showing us the information that they were not properly shut down. We can uh, make the same exercise uh, when we will be, uh, let's say, um, moving back to the, our original uh, data. So maybe I will prove that when I do some, uh, let's say, extra copy. Okay, I make some extra copies. And this data will be not replicated back, right? So I was just... Um, refreshing these windows uh, with some uh, new data but uh, now I'm do not replicating back and what happened when uh, let's say I will be switching back to my uh, original data um, before disaster okay so we can switch it back so I was showing you that the um, our storage adapter is connected for both pools, right? So here, uh, 2131, that's the virtual IPs of the first pool, and that's the target of the first pool. And 2232, that's the, and this target with dot .clone, of course, you can use a uh, own uh, nice name for such a disaster recovery, is from the second pool. I will maybe show you that our virtual IPs from the second pool are exactly 22.32, yeah. And when we will be importing the first pool, uh, we will see the same. So now, I will simulate the same stuff, like uh, exporting now our disaster recovery pool uh, one, where we have the clone, so export. So the pool disappear and actually now, uh, at this moment, the pool 0 and pool 1, both are not imported. So the, I will be importing back my uh, pool 0. Let's say it was not totally killed, but uh, now it is available. Okay, I can import this. Just type import. Okay, so this pool is back, and look what happened. Uh, this pool is back, and look, the SCSI ID was um, exactly identical because uh, these uh, uh, log files I was downloading uh, exactly from this pool, right? So now, when this is coming back, so let us rescan and let us see what happened. So it is completed rescan already very fast. Let us see. Very fast. Progress. Okay, completed. Looks like this switching it this time was somehow fast. Okay, let us see what happened with our machine. Uh, you see, 
this uh, machine was not uh, restarted, but this machine, you know, these uh, copies are not existing here, really. So uh, let us see if I can. Okay, it looks like they, they were somewhere here in the uh, Windows. Um, sorry, in the Windows uh, cache. But what happened when I quickly reboot the machine? Or some other uh, disk refreshing will be needed, but okay, the reboot is also very fast right now. Okay, I will log in. And open our files. And you see all these files which were originally there are appearing uh, here. Because the other copies we made on the clone and we didn't uh, replicate. So now, uh, coming back, I have just pool zero and the pool one is still not imported. So my replication tasks, uh, there is some problem. You see, uh, the uh, clones are, so the, not cl clones, the snapshots are done, but we know they, they are not replicated for sure. So for sure we'll be seeing some uh, things like the destination uh, pool is failed and we are not able to make the re replication. So let us fix this problem and now come back to the regular stuff that our backup pool will be available again. Okay, the backup pool is uh, available again, so we will expect that uh, if it was any changes by meantime, I can make some, let's say, copy everything. Okay, copy, make some new directory. Okay. TST. And copy everything here. Okay. Uh, that doesn't matter. Okay, so we have made some changes now. These changes, of course, will be again replicated. So now the pool uh, one is back, and let us see what's going on here. So with the iSCSI target, we should expect a problem. Yes, there is a problem because when we were exporting, now uh, importing this pool now, so now we have a, uh, our clone and our original volume has the same SCSI ID. So th this um, uh, problem was discovered, and then, uh, of course, target is inactive now. So we have the two options. We can delete this clone, or we can just, uh, let's say, edit and uh, generate new uh, SCSI ID, so there will be no conflict, and now I can go edit and uh, activate my iSCSI target, the clone, okay. But actually, the clone which I have here, I don't need. If I have this clone, so this clone will be uh, blocking rotation of this snapshot. So the uh, the 1619, when we will go here, the 1619 will be remaining, uh, not deleted. So now it's the first one because there was no uh, replication yet, but we will see that uh, in the next uh, seconds, uh, the replication uh, should uh, already uh, refresh and should already replicate the, the new snapshots. So now here we have a here we have these new uh, snapshots working.
and on the destination, not yet. Uh, well, uh, we will need to see what's going on with this replications um, task. But by meantime, I'll let me remove this uh, clone. Okay, and let us check uh, what's going on with our service. So this new service, uh, you can find uh, the description of this service in, in our help. So when you go to help, uh, you will see the very last line is the offsite data protection service. And that's the description how it, this service works. So uh, but the syntax of the commands is available when you connect to the uh, command line. So we uh, put information here that this is managed by command line and we define the service here. So ODPS creates rotational auto snapshots of dataset or ZVOL according to the retention plan and in asynchronous way uh, replicate the delta of this snapshot to destination or many destinations because we can have a many uh, such a plan okay there is a always retention interval plan means first we have a so-called retention and then we have interval in our current plan when I will say uh, let's say get uh, so a list task uh, we have a command list tasks to, to list the backup tasks and that's exactly the current plan so the current plan is uh, first retention is five minutes every minute and the second retention is for the last hour every 10 minutes Okay, so that was the definition which I was preparing for our today demonstration. So when I go to our source snapshots, then we see, okay, we have a 1637, 1636, 35, 34, 33, 32, 30, and the 29 mm, was um, uh, showing there, and then, then it's 10, you see that is, uh, uh, um, just every uh, 10 minutes but from time to time they are uh, snapshots which were not deleted because of plant uh, tests which were made before but when, when the, everything works well and there is no clone or there is no something uh, what, what is blocking to remove the snapshots then you will see just purely the last hour will be every 10 minutes and the last uh, five minutes ev uh, every one minute. I was making quite short plan uh, because this is good for the demonstration. Of course, um, default plan is, uh, let's say, for one month when you will not uh, enter the parameters, right? So let us see if the, by meantime, is it working already? So we can see that uh, it was recovering and finally um, this, the, the um, replication is working because now it's uh, uh, 4 p.m. 38 minutes and that's exactly the last snapshot here and as I mentioned uh, when I put the command uh, with just ODPS so if I put the command line with pelling to my uh, host to my DSS Jovian, so uh, uh, we list all the available commands, okay? If I will just put ODPS, uh, which is listed here as the third from the bottom, I will get exact uh, help for the syntax of this command, right? So that's the exact syntax and then uh, let us try a few comments so uh, the first one is uh, i was showing already that's the list okay uh, we can of course delete such a task so the task is always um, 
having the name as of his source. So here the source is pool zero and uh, slash zivol zero zero because our that's the zivol uh, name of the source zivol zero zero and on pool one I was putting exactly the same name of our zivol right. So I can delete such a task. So let's say delete task. And now uh, we have examples here. So the example of the, the line number five, which is here, maybe, okay, mark, uh, which is here. So I'm showing the uh, delete commands and then the pool and the data set. In our case, we have the pool zero and the zivol zero zero. Okay, that's our task name in this case. Okay, so when I will delete this task, Uh, I get answer that the task has uh, been successfully deleted. So when I will just list the task again, I see there is no task found now. So now, of course, the uh, replication will be uh, no more running. Uh, let us see. Here I have a command which is get task defaults. So I will maybe mark, so that's the get task defaults, right? So in our task uh, get we have this uh, uh, retention plan. So the, the current plan default is uh, five minutes every one minute and one hour every 10 minutes, okay? So we can, of course, change this plan. And uh, good thing is that we have the plan. We don't need to put the plan uh, in the command when we create the task, okay? So let's say we want to set a um, plan which will be a bit different than this one. Uh, of course, to notice the um, difference quite fast, I will need to make this, uh, let's say, not the, uh, let's say, five minutes every 10 minutes, but let's say 10 minutes every minute, right? So I will have just, just uh, the last uh, 10 snapshots only. So we can put, let's say, set task defaults and then I'm doing plan and in the plan I can put let's say uh, 10 minutes and every one minute and comma I can put let's say one day every one Hour. Of course, we can use the uh, age for the hour or just write uh, hour. Uh, we, there is a description here exactly showing which uh, short um, you can use. Okay? So that's the uh, default now. So I will, let's say, get task defaults. So uh, you see, that's my new default 10 minutes every minute and then uh, one day every hour. Okay? So we can create, so list task, no tasks. So what uh, we are missing is a task. Of course, when we have uh, two backup nodes, then we will need to run command, which is attach. Okay, so I will put the uh, attach. Let's say my uh, source is 220, so my destination is 221, so 192.168.0.221. So I will need to attach the node, and after attaching the node, I can start the, the task. 
in my case, I have just uh, everything in the local. So my task definition will be not uh, showing the destination task IP. Here I will show the example where we have the create the task on a remote node, which is, let's say, here. And uh, for example, that's the command. Right. So on the source, I put the uh, pool and uh, data set of Zivol name. And on the destination, I put the IP colon and the destination volume on Zivol. And I optionally, I can use uh, mBuffer, which is buffering the uh, transport. If you omit the mBuffer, then, of course, uh, data will be uh, sent without buffering. OK. So we can create the task now. So I will just ODPS and say create task. Or create task. Source. Pool 0. Zero, zero, 0 And the destination is pool. One and the zvol zero zero. Okay, I can also put m buffer. Let us see if task is created. Task has been created, so let us list tasks. So that's our new task, and we see also there is another default. The m buffer default size is one giga. Of course, you can put, uh, let's say, 5 giga if you want to use more memory for the buffering. And the uh, retention plan is uh, 10 minutes. So the last 10 minutes, we will have a every minute snapshot. And then the we'll last one day, we'll have every hour. Then, of course, uh, uh, during the um, our demonstration will be very difficult to see every hour snapshot, right? We'll see just every minute. But now we'll see what change already before we are ha having last um, 10 minutes uh, for the last hour so now uh, what's happened now okay we will be uh, slowly showing uh, only soon just the last 10 minutes uh, snapshot right because the previous every 10 minutes is now not interesting so these are removed and everything goes accordingly to the new plan OK, so the new plan also will be showing here. It looks like it can be a GUI problem. Right, it was just a GUI hanging problem. And I was, I didn't know what's going on, but now everything looks. In this case, I have a snapshot. Uh, the very fresh is a 1655, and on my pool one is uh, exactly the same. So everything works. So everything works, and then uh, we can already try. to make another, uh, let's say, uh, disaster, or maybe try to make some, OK, show with the uh, status. Yeah, that's ex exactly show that it is working. So the backup is done, and it was just, just one second. So of course, when we will be adding some more data, and then it will take a, a longer time, but I don't have so much uh, data here. So we can try to copy this. The data are very small, so that's why we can uh, expect a longer time. And this is in the local machine, so it will be quite fast. OK, so 
Now uh, we have the defined a new uh, plan and we have recreated the task. We have machine uh, up and running and then uh, we can try again whether everything works uh, uh, well. So here I will again show you the connection, the virtual IPs which I was connecting the first pool was 2131, right? And uh, that's the iSCSI target and my ZVOL, everything is connected to this, that's the 4.88 terabyte, okay? And uh, on pool one, our virtual IP is 2232, and here I was defining the target, which is the empty now, so there is no volumes here. The volume, uh, which is our destination volume, is not exported, and it should not be exported, because when the volume is exported itself, so we can have the problem with the uh, ODPS service. We, in ODPS service, on our target destination, we need to export just the clones, which we want to use uh, in case of disaster. Because this volume is overwritten, uh, in our case, in every minute, with the new snapshots, right? So, yeah, that's every f uh, minute is working, and we see that the there will be the last 10 minutes, and later on uh, the, the older one uh, will be still uh, staying, because um, it's not uh, older than one hour, but after a few hours you will see that uh, just every hour we will have the snapshot. Okay, so just one more demo, we can make the uh, ag again new disaster, so uh, we see that the, our machine is up and running, we have some new uh, data copied, and we can quickly make the uh, export again. After quick export, we can go to the last snapshot and clone it. Clone one. We attach to the target which is prepared already. Okay, and again, be uh, aware that you should have the uh, node somewhere or download the logs with the SCSI ID, otherwise you will have to uh, remove and add to the inventory of these machines, because based on the SCSI ID, VMware is connecting all these volumes and machines, they are registered uh, based on the SCSI ID. Okay, so uh, when you will do it, then of course it will be much faster to get with the recovery. So the recovery, the, the um, scanning is now in the progress. It will take some time uh, to switch to the new. If by meantime it was a different uh, SCSI ID, then there will be no choice. You will have to remove machine from the inventory and add them to the inventory again. So that uh, depends when you have a few machines that will be just a few minutes. If you have a lot, that can become you know long um, task. So now we have it done. Okay, the machine is already is accessible again. I can even start some uh, team viewer. Uh, sorry, some IOMeta. Uh, but interesting is whether our data is there. Okay, we have some data copied there. And also interesting is if this is real. So maybe I will make sure. Just restart.
okay you see all, everything is nice no data lost everything what was replicated is appearing here so it's quite nice of course there is a uh, next step uh, which will be adding here that will be consistent uh, snapshot of the database so uh, uh, but for the regular uh, virtual machines uh, this can work already as a very good very fast uh, backup to collocation uh, this is a snapshot efficient uh, means uh, every minute we send the delta so uh, only data which were made by meantime and every time the replication starts it's it's already know what what to be sent okay so that's the uh, demo for the today so Mm, we are done with our mm, demonstration today. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, and uh, I would like to also invite you for the next one when we will be go, uh, showing everything uh, step by step and we'll be showing more complicated setup when we have, let's say, a cluster on one side and a cluster on another side or let's say cluster and a single node on another side and then uh, also replicating between two locations, not uh, uh, just the uh, uh, regular uh, local machine. So again, thank you very much for joining and watch uh, when we will have the next webinar. Thank you very much and bye bye.